Oh, the F-18 V-4 multi-role park jet. The F-18 V-4 is the next generation of the V-3. It's everything the V-3 was and more. And I told a couple guys in the forum, I'm not going to do a V-4 of the F-18 or the MiG unless we can really get some stuff together to make them better. Let me go over three key factors that really made the difference. The first thing is all the planes have limitations based upon their roles and their airframe. The thing with the F-18 wing and its whole platform in general is it's just this multi-role, fully load me up type of plane. The wing is closest to a Cessna wing than any of the other fighter jets. It doesn't have a super sweep back. In fact, on the F-18 V-4, we made it even more straight. If you look at it, you probably can't tell the difference, but if you look at it compared to the V3 or a real F-18, we have the trailing edge of the wing not sloping forward as much as the scale one does. So it's a little bit flatter. Why? This is to allow the airflow to wisp off the wing from the inside of the plane going out to the wingtips. And comboing this wing shape with the fronterons, leading edge slats, you get a lot of lift on this plane, a lot of very stable lift. This is a wing wing on this airplane. So the first thing is its wing shape and its whole overall shape creates a limitless platform. So that'd be the first thing. It's a limitless platform. Just a little side note there, when we were flying for filming, I kept trying to find the most comfortable cruising speed to get the plane to look really smooth. And what we found was the fronterons come in a fixed down position. You know, we of course, dialed in, you know, what's the angle they need to be. So we found the best angle for the front runs and then set them in a fixed position. They're notched in with their little missile rails. You can see pictures and how-tos on the forum thread. But then flying with a little bit of flaps down. And if you notice, this is how the real F-18s fly. They've got their front runs down and they got their flaps down a little bit. You know, when they have the onboard cameras, you can see the wings moving around stuff. And just having this plane fly with the truest wing of a wing the second thing is control surfaces. This is where we learned a lot, how important it is to keep playing and morphing around with the control surfaces, size, shape, proportions, angles, because changing those just a little bit makes a big difference. So with the F-18 V4 here, the control surfaces are dramatically changed from its V3 predecessors, especially looking at the ailerons. The ailerons on the F-18 V-4, they slope down and outward. So again, the air is coming from the nose and then going across the wing and then out the wingtips. This is always washing air out to the wingtips. So the wingtips are not going to stall. The F-18 V-3, we started to see hints of this kind of coming online. It was a very stable plane, but the F-18 V-4 is stall proof. We're also able to do a little bit of changes on the elevators in the back and the rudders to get them more efficient, better leverage for high alpha, and try to get a little bit more of a scale look. So that was the second thing, a control surface overhaul. The third thing with the F-18 V4 is the unlimited control setup options. Now this is going the exact opposite of the SU-34 V4 Super Trainer where it's originally designed to fly best off of Elevons only. Of course, you can add extra stuff on it as you go, but it's designed for Elevons only. The F-18 V4, other way around. It's designed for load this thing up with servos. There better be six to eight servos on that thing when I see a picture of it on the forum. You're going to have the most fun with the whole control setup. This is what's nice about the V4s is that each plane fills a very specific role. So they're very different from each other. So the F-18 V4 comes in the V4 Pro Pack. It's on our website and there's a link down below. You can read about it and see it on the forum as well.